Right, so, James Cleverly, unbelievably, he is still the Foreign Secretary because that's how mad the Sunak government is. That's the level we're at in the lack of talent stakes in government today. He's had a bit of a mayor on Sky News this morning, demonstrating that he has all the mental gymnastics talent of a dead duck, yet insists on flapping his lips while saying absolutely nothing of note whatsoever. That in itself is a bit of a talent, I suppose, for noise to keep leaving your mouth while contributing the sum total of Jack in the way you're informing those you're addressing. And if the critics accuse me of doing that, we'll stuff you. Anyway, this is exactly why they send him out, though. They see him as a good communicator, even though he says absolutely sod all except to blame Labour for everything the Tories have stuffed up over the last 13 years. He's been referred to as an attack dog by spectators' right-wing scribbler Katie Balls, though I kind of think of him more as the jowly, dribbly sort, salivating at the idea of chasing next door's cat if that cat were a sad, grey, greasy, whiny creature, possibly called Keith. But when it comes to chasing said creature, the two brain cells said canine calamity is in possession of are too busy fighting over third place, and his legs go in two different directions. That's a James Cleverly interview for you. Number 10's idea of him being an attack dog must come from him trolling people on Twitter, I would imagine, notwithstanding the fact most ordinary people are more than a match for whatever drivel he punches into his phone to put out onto social media. Anyway... He sat down with Niall Patterson this morning on Sky and was confronted on a number of issues, Ukraine, climate change, notably. But then the conversation turned to the current scandal slash source of embarrassment for the government right now, which centres around the escape from Wandsworth prison of a chap called Daniel Khalif. Now, Patterson asked cleverly in relation to this, first and foremost, do we have anything in terms of an update that might allay people's fears about the fact that this man remains on the run? Straightforward question. No gotcha there, really. Just update the public, please. But Cleverly isn't there for that. He's there to obfuscate and excuse. And so he responded with, so I don't have an update specifically on the investigation. Of course, this is an ongoing investigation, at which point Patterson chipped back in. He knew where he was going. But this is a guy, he chipped in, though, that this is a guy who is on remand. He is facing trial. He hasn't been convicted of anything yet. Trying to help Cleverly get to the point, I felt, of actually answering the question. Pretty much all that was being asked at this point was, what do you know? What is the latest? And Cleverly going, don't ask me, Gov, I don't know nothing. However, being a liberal spreader of word salad, that didn't stop Cleverly from carrying on and saying something. And indeed, he did carry on and say stuff. He said, but we are, of course, looking into the nature of this escape. The Conservative government, the Prime Minister, take public safety incredibly important top priority. We're increasing the number of prison places, prison officer numbers, police officer numbers. We are very, very focused. Except on the question, obviously. He really is a master of not answering what he's asked, yet in his dim-wittedness he just opened up a further can of worms for himself. If public safety is so important, why have you left schools and other public buildings in such a poor state thanks to the rack scandal that they're now literally a danger to life? A hundred schools being closed on that basis isn't taking public safety seriously, is it, when you've let things get this bad? You've increased prison places, have you? Apparently, yes, by 11,000 places. But, and there's a big but, last June, the Prison Officers Association, the trade union for prison officers, wrote to the prison service, asking about what the possibility of rack being found in prison buildings was. We know this concrete crisis goes far beyond just schools, after all. They haven't had a reply on that. All the Prison Officers Association know at this point is that back in May, May, Prisons Minister Damien Hines asked that all prisons were assessed for RAG, and no further information on that is coming out either. So, great if you've increased prison places, James, but if the prison has to close because of RAG at some point, why are you being so quiet about this? Where are you going to put prisoners then? How about... Prison officer numbers increasing there. Well, your colleague, the science minister, uh, Michelle Donnellan, has been full, full fact checked after she claimed the other day on Radio 4 that the number of officers have increased by 20 percent when, in fact, she was lying. And although they have apparently increased, that increase amounts to just 3.2 percent. Again, if prisons get condemned over their construction, though, what are these officers then? And as for police officer numbers, well, we know what you did there. You claim to have recruited 20,000 new police officers from actually, you've recruited 29,000. But when you factor in the fact you got rid of 26,000 police officers in the name of austerity, we've only actually seen a net increase of around 3,000 officers in reality, and you couldn't even get your numbers right. 
Just be honest with people. And by the way, answer the question you were actually asked for crying out loud. Well, Niall Patterson, let's come back to him. He wasn't finished at all. He came back at cleverly with, this government has sat for two years on a report from the chief inspector of prisons, which pointed out that the massive problems that there were with overcrowding and understaffing. Four years on, we've had another prisoner manage to escape. The chief inspector said last night, Wandsworth Prison should be closed. If we had a school failing pupils as badly as this, it would be closed. A prison is failing the people inside it, and indeed the public in Wandsworth and elsewhere. Shouldn't we not consider that as an option? Wowzers, there's a zinger, isn't it? Stick that one in your pipe, Jimbo. Come back on that one. Well, he tried. Cleverly came back with, well, we are updating and modernising and increasing our prison estates. We are looking at six new prisons. I wonder if they exist as much as 40 new hospitals do. 22,000 extra prison places. We've already recruited 4,000 extra prison officers, so we're putting numbers to stuff again now. There are another 5,000 to be recruited. Are there really? We're doing those things. It's not an oversight thing. Building new prisons is not a quick fix. Oh, for the love of God, just answer the ruddy question. Patterson cut in. He'd had enough again. You've been saying that since 2010, you've been saying that since 2010, but Cleverly was unperturbed. He just carried on. And what have we seen is... Crime dropped overall by half. Violent crime dropped by 40%. Patterson stopped him again. Get him back on track, Niall, please. He'll just trot out stats all morning otherwise. Back to Daniel Khalif, Niall Patterson said, at which point Cleverly suddenly got rather animated and shot out, and prison escapes were ten times higher prior to us coming into power. Oh, well, that's okay then. You can let people escape prison too, as long as it's not as many as New Labour did. I feel so much safer already. Patterson was equally unimpressed, dryly coming back with, given the nature of the crimes he is accused of, I'm not sure that's the kind of defence I'd be pulling out of the bag right now. Oh, 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 Jimbo, another fine mess you've got yourself into. Cue the Laurel and Hardy music. The interview went on a bit longer, mostly cleverly just avoiding answering anything on it in the name of refusing to speculate. In other words, he doesn't have a scooby. Now, Labour seeing prison escapes happen on their watch way back when, absolutely condemnable, obviously. But the Tories, after 13 years, can't use what went on before as an excuse for what has happened now on their watch in this intervening in these intervening years. Daniel Khalif was on remand for terror offences and offences relating to the Official Secrets Act. He's an ex-soldier and works as a computer network engineer in the Royal Signals. He's basically a military made hacker. He was being held on remand awaiting trial in Wandsworth Prison, accused of carrying out a bomb hoax at an RAF base. He was on remand for eliciting information that could be useful to a terrorist and for gathering information for the same or similar purpose. If you consider his role in the signals, the work he did that they do in cyber warfare, along with the information he was seeking to obtain and gather and could well and had been trained in order to be able to do so, he could well be a significant threat to national security. Yet he was able to escape Wandsworth by strapping himself to the bottom of a food delivery truck, having dressed himself up as a chef. One of the biggest questions that should be asked is why was he even at Wandsworth, given he was on remand for terror-related offences? And that always is supposed to require a maximum security Category A prison stay, like Belmarsh, for example. No room? Well, you could always have freed Julian Assange, and then there might have been space for one more. Potential terrorist versus whistleblowing journalist. That's the Tory priorities choice for you. Anyway, Wandsworth is a Category B prison. High security, yes, sure, but it's not maximum, as terror suspects are meant to be held in. So for all of Cleverly's bleating about prison places, that isn't the whole story, is it? Two days on, there is absolutely no sign of this guy. The police have only managed to stop the delivery van. They stopped it within an hour, but by the time they had, he was gone. For all of Cleverly's claims of increased prison officers as well, the Prison Officers Association have again waded in and spoken up, saying there were fewer than 100 officers on duty at Wandsworth at the time of the escape. A high security prison where a minimum, minimum of 120 are supposed to be on duty. Staffing levels were down 17%. So is it any surprise there's been an escape? Adding to that the fact Wandsworth is already overcrowded. It's meant to hold 917 prisoners. Instead, it's holding nearly 1,600, minus one now, and the problem gets markedly worse. Understaffing has been blamed, and of course that makes sense when you look at the numbers, and this should put Cleverly's attacks on Labour in the shade, because in 2010, when the Tories came in, there were 24,830 prison officers, according to Statista.com. 
And today in 2023, there are 22,288. So prison officer numbers have gone down since they came into power. For clarification's sake, the full fact claim numbers that I mentioned before, that uh, they claim have risen, that prison officer numbers have risen by 3.2%, that relates to just over the last year. So yes, the Tories are increasing numbers now, but under their watch over the last 13 years, numbers are indeed still down. The damage of austerity here still not fixed. Now, we have the spectre of rack in prisons hanging over our heads as well. Already overcrowded as they are, we can't afford to lose a single one of these prisons that the government is keeping very quiet after requesting information on all of this all the way back in May. And we have the potential for an almighty mess on our hands if significant numbers of our prisons, or frankly any of them, are found to have rack in them. We aren't safe with Tories running the country. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful. Please like, share and subscribe if you did. More content out daily. Please do leave a comment and share your opinions on this story. Be part of the conversation too. Meanwhile, here's a video recommendation where perhaps this will be the message to prison officers before long from the Tories. As Samantha Bradman has demanded that the police work harder to make up for those numbers shortages that they've got. Just work harder. Well, that's a small problem with that, isn't there? Those numbers that, you know, you haven't got. And I'll hopefully see you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.